Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Beware the Artist. I am Jeremy Jersa, and with us this week on the show, we have Lou Ross. Lou, if you want to go ahead and tell us who you are and what is it that you do. Um, hello. Thanks for your invitation. Um, my name is Lou Ross, and um, I am a painter, uh, but I don't do only painting, but I call myself a painter, and I work in Paris. So... Great, great. So um, in terms of your studio practice, what themes do you find yourself exploring in your work? Um, I really started with the painting, like the classic painting on canvas. And um, like for, I did this for maybe 10 years, but I really started with the graffiti, but not the graffiti you find in, in the street. The graffiti you do when you spend like uh, three or four days to do it. So not the really uh, illegal things, you see, uh, almost illegal things. And uh, then I started to do paintings. Um, and uh, now I try to explore more about uh, um, how, how I can change the, um, the square part of the painting, you know? Mm. So I try to go outside of it with, uh, with tissue, with, uh, you know, I don't know how do you say it in English, but with, um, with this, I don't know the name. <laughs> the cotton with cotton and, Very, and yeah. like clothes, you see. And uh, also to change the shape of the canvas, like that's why I'm working on uh, wood wood cutted belts, you know. Nice, so nice. This is all I do now. So, um, how do you actually begin a painting? What is that process like for you? Um, when I do. A landscape, what I work uh, actually on. Um, I really just think about how how it can look like. Like uh, I will just think to a composition. Like maybe the the top of the canvas could be this and this. So I just start to draw with a watercolor pencil. That's really a big part of my work. Is that I really just draw some lines, like a. a really drawing on paper on a big canvas. And then I try to, to complete it with, with painting, with color, but it never really work at the first step. Like I will put some paintings and then I will change it. And then so the modification will make it look what it will look at the end. But uh, like error are a part of my process on the painting. So in your studio, um, what is the atmosphere like? Do you have music playing? Is it silent? Is there, are you listening to anything? What's, what's going on in there? Well, at my studio, we are three painters. So it really depends on what mood we are. Like sometimes I don't have a headset mm -hmm. and I'm speaking with my friends and they are here and we can speak about our work and maybe about everything like, hey, how are you today? And things like that. And then when it becomes to be a bit more serious, like when I'm really in a painting, I, I put just my headset and I put music on it. And I know like for, for my uh, co-worker, it's the signal that I'm really into it. So we don't speak anymore, but there is no um, uh, music for everybody. Like, mm -hmm. because if one of my co-workers doesn't want to want to listen to music, I just put headset and it's a signal that I'm really focused on what I'm doing. So uh, when you have your headset on, what is the, what, what music is playing? What's, what's going on in there? Uh, mostly, mostly um, hip hop music. Hip hop, nice. Yeah, uh, mostly because I find it really, uh, you know, it's really pushy. So mm -hmm. it's really make the thing, you know, I don't, I don't fall asleep when I'm listening to this. So I'm really entertaining by the music. And it's, I think it's the best music for me to, 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 to create. Even if sometimes the, 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 the song is not about what I'm working, but mm -hmm. it's what I feel good to, to be able to have the motivation to do it. So it's on Spotify. I'm just links, listening to hip hop. Nice, and nice. And other things, but mostly hip hop, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Um, 
So when I when I first encountered your work, I, I found that you were kind of focusing more on portraits and, and figures. Um, what were you trying to capture in that in that work? Um, I really started to do painting without really thinking about what I'm doing. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I don't come from an art school. Mm -hmm. So um, I was painting friends and uh, you know, like really the first painting I was doing when I was a graffiti artist, I was making portrait of 50 cent and things like that. So I really started with portrait and then I started to, to paint my friend, my family, people I like. And then uh, I switched to image I was finding interesting, mm -hmm. but it's not the same process as I'm doing now because now I really try to have the subject uh, um, having really an important part of what it will be at the end. But for, for maybe 10 years, I was just looking at an image or a portrait or a photography and I was saying, wow, it could be a cool painting, you see. But even if the portrait was not from me or my friend, I was just picking things. It was really uh, an inconscient thing. Like, I like this image, I will paint it, but no, I have a different process, but it was my process for, for many years, yeah. So what made you go from this kind of graffiti and street art kind of aspect to the more conventional uh, canvas work? Yeah, uh, it's really like, not lucky things, but I, I, I became allergic to spray. You see, <laughs> you see what spray is? Yeah. So I had a big uh, headache with, with the spray because you know, in, in 20 years ago, the spray, it wasn't acrylic. It was the most toxic things you can <laughs> have on it. So using it every day, uh, I don't know, my body just rejected it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, if it makes a, a really big headache to my head, maybe I have to change it. And I did some really bad paintings on canvas. But then a guy come to me and said, uh, do you want to do an exhibition with your paintings? And I, he, he sold my first uh, canvas and I was like, wow, so I can maybe live from this. And it was like, I don't know, 16 years ago. So let's, let's, let's work on this. <laughs> That's amazing. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing that I've always found kind of exciting as I've seen your work and seen your progression over time um, is your willingness to experiment. Um, can you speak to the, the importance of experimentation in your studio practice? Well, my, my mother, for example, is a choreographer and, and I really uh, was inspired by the fact that she was also experimenting things like, mm -hmm. and seeing one of your parents being uh, an artist too, and being able to, to change the thing because I, I did a lot of jobs, different jobs just to, to eat at the beginning. And you see, you do every day the same things sometimes. And to be able to have the liberty to, 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 to produce and do what I want every day, uh, I don't want to stay on something I'm, I feel great with. But it's maybe not a good thing, like maybe, maybe. But I like to, to be like a, a searcher doing research. Mm -hmm. I really like to, I don't like to feel really well with a, with a canvas. If I feel really good with it, I don't want to do the same tomorrow. Yeah. I, I want to try to go further and, and try other things without doing big, big step. Like I don't want to switch from, I don't know, a, a really different thing. But for me, it's all small step that make my works that, that is what it is now, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so most recently I, I've seen kind of less focus on the, the figuration and more of what appears to be kind of textiles and fabrics that are creating yeah. these kind of landscapes. Um, and then as well as the, the painted landscapes and birds. Um, yeah. how, did that, how did that pivot in the subject matter kind of come about? Well, I, I really had a big discussion with uh, important people in the art world. And we really had um, uh, 
some some subjects that really make me think that I can't well I can but I don't want to just pick image and paint them. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I have an, a bit uh, a role to do because a lot of people are looking at my paintings and maybe maybe I could put a bit more uh, important subject on it. So I try to to focus on what really matters on me. You know, like when I was really a child, I was eating on a, a plate and my favorite plate was a, a plate with a bird on it. So I tried to, to, to start to pick what really is me mm. and, and not what other people are. So uh, with other people in the art world, we, we, we realized it's really important and it can make a big change when the artist uh, really is interested by the subject. And so it was like a, a big change, but it was a change because I really decided to focus on what I, I am and what I like. So that's why I'm working about birds, no landscape and how, how human is modificating the, the, the mm -hmm. landscape and things like that. So how did the, how did the fabric come in? Because I feel like that's such a, material kind of choice yeah yeah um in fact i started to do the tissue tissue how do you say, say tissue? tissue tissue yeah sure yeah it's fine yeah um i i did a lot of big landscape like really 10 meters landscape because mm -hmm. for me when the spectator come and see the, the painting it's important that it is quite big so you have the same feelings and when you are in the in 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 the wood or, or in really in front of the sea, you, you can't really have what the same feeling in front of the canvas, except when the canvas is like twenty meters long. Like yeah, you you you, you feel the same. That's why I, I never did a landscape smaller than two meters uh, in until recently, where I try as an exercise size to do it smaller, but. And then I was like, but still, even if it's 10 meters, it's still a square paintings. Mm -hmm. And so I started to, to, unless to stretch the painting at the size, at, at the side, I tried to not stretch it. Okay. So, so, so it started to be, to come outside of the paintings. Mm -hmm. And so I started to paint this part too. And then I was like, maybe, I could use tissue and, and, and ask some people to give me the, the tissues as they are not using anymore, like the clothes. Mm -hmm. And then I started to, in, instead of painting the color, I was picking the color from a tissue and, and added it on, on the canvas. And so I had a different texture because when the canvas is not stretched, the, the, the stuff, uh, how, how, how it's seen, or oh, it's sick. It's really important, and so that's why I started to to work with tissue because how it's falling, it's really is important for me. That's why it's called falling landscape, mm. and that's why I thought it was important to go outside of the square canvas. So that's how it started. I love that. I love that, and it's such a it, you know, it it brings the viewer into that realm and has them kind of you know encompassed in this space. It's it's almost invading our personal yeah. personal space yeah. in a really and, nice and, way. And started with this, I, I, I also started to work without the, the, the frame, you know, mm -hmm. because it was still the same problematic, like it was still canvas on the wall, like on my back. And I was looking for the fewer to be able to enter in. That's why I started to do falling landscape without any frame. That's how you can go inside, outside, and that's what you can do when you are in the night too, like in a wood or at the beach or something like that. You can really walk outside. And uh, recently you've also been, you know, shaping these birds as yeah. well. Um, yeah. how, how did that start? Well, I had a few exhibitions where I was doing landscape mostly. And with every landscape I was working, the first exhibition was about, it was nine landscape and night portraits and the portraits was were people that were uh, 
giving modification about the landscape in a bad or in a good way. Like it was people uh, from the mafia that were doing bad things to, to get the uh, uh, different uh, construction on it. Or, or it was people that were taking care about how we can protect this environment. So I wasn't telling which one is good, which one is bad, because I, I don't want to judge this. Mm -hmm. But it was just nine, nine landscape and nine portraits of people that were protecting or making evolving the, the landscape. And then I started to do the different thing with, with bird, but it was kind of the same uh, on the it was like you have the landscape and sometimes you have a bird that can appear exactly when you are looking um, outside, like you can have the landscape and suddenly you can have a bird coming. And that's how I started to do little canvas about birds that mm -hmm. could appear in the big landscape. And then I started to do the bird with a different uh, shape. That's how I started to cut the, the wood. Nice, nice. And then also the the scale of them, it, it's quite large. Yeah. Um, so why why so big with the, with the the scale of the birds? Yeah, that's a good question because I don't have the answer actually. <laughs> no, but I, I I always feel the thing to be important when you have a big and a small things close. Like um, when I do the hanging of the exhibition. I always try to put a really little birds really close to a really big canvas. Mm -hmm. And the big will make a good few of the of, of the the small will make a good few of the big and the small will make and the big will make a good few of the small. I don't know if you see this, but it was important for me to be able to relate from the human size. And Recently, I did like birds for, that did three meter high. So I don't know, maybe when they are really bigger than a human, we, we look at them with, with a bit more importance because sometimes when they are really small, we don't really care about them. But when mm. they do three meter, suddenly you really look at them and you are like, oh, this is nice. Maybe we should take care a bit of them. <laughs> and yeah. so, because we don't look at them because when they are this size, if they die, we don't care. But when they are three meters, oh, this is nice. So I had this, this reaction and I was like, maybe I should do them really big. Yeah, we're forced to confront that yeah. size. Yeah. yeah. Um, so one interesting uh, question that I like to ask every person that's that's yeah. been on the show is, um, at what point in your life did you start calling yourself an artist? I, I still wouldn't call me <laughs> really an artist because I, you know, I don't do poetry about my work. I'm really, it's like a scientist uh, things like, mm -hmm. I'm not really a big um, uh, thinking, uh, imagining, who will speak a lot about his work. I, I like when my work speaks from itself and, but if I could define it, it was when I really started to have a big exhibition all over the world and be a, being able to stop to to do some job to 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 paint. Like, but it's not when I was really an artist. It's it's, it's when I became a professional painter because yeah. I was living from my what I was doing. But yeah, I don't know it's a definition. Yeah. I get that. It makes it makes sense. Um, so, you know, COVID has been, you know, yeah. crazy for everyone around the world. Um, how has it been for you working in Paris during the time of COVID? How has that been? Um, at the beginning, it was really scary because we didn't knew we didn't know what what is going on. Everything was cancelled. Mm -hmm. um, I have a feeling it was. It, it is like an adver advertisement, like no, uh, like um, that we should take care more about nature, and it's like uh, a warning. You see, mm -hmm. uh, so I didn't took it it really bad, even if I know a lot of people lost 
their life and friends and family. But I take it as a warning, like what are we doing? What, what did we do? And how we are not in correlation with nature. And so for me, it's a warning of what we are doing and we are taking it in front of our head. But if we can speak professionally, like every, every show I had, um, like in US or, or in England or every, everywhere was totally canceled. But in France, we, we still did, did exhibition when we were able with Malgarist. Mm -hmm. So, but well, you know, I'm not like a famous singer or thing like that. Like I, I was still able to go to work in my studio. So for me, it was nice because I didn't have a big head headlines. And I, I was able to finally create without, without thinking about the show. And that was a good, good thing because I didn't, I, I didn't have the time since a lot of years to be able to, to experiment without thinking about it will be exhibited in two weeks. Yeah, so yeah. I'm trying to see the positive things, but it was complicated for a lot of people. So I, I, I don't enjoy it, but I think the hum, human being has to, to evolve and to adapt. Mm -hmm. But um, it was okay. You know, when you, are, when you are a painter, you come home and you go to your studio. It didn't change a lot of things for yeah. me. We live pretty secluded lives yeah. as it is. Yeah. Um, well, with that being said, that kind of leads me to my next question. Um, if you're not in the studio, what might be something you're doing for fun? Uh, well, I also have a tattoo shop, so oh, okay. I do tattoo too, but it's really for fun. Like, uh, uh, I'm also tattooing birds and things like that, but it's really, a, uh, I don't want to make it my full time, mm -hmm. but I do this a bit and I like to do sport and just enjoying life with my friends. I don't do really, I don't have like a specific thing. Like I don't go to tennis or something like that. I don't go to swim exactly. <laughs> I just like to enjoy the thing, but I really enjoy what I'm doing when, I, when I'm painting. So mm -hmm. when I have nothing to, to do, I, I go to my studio. Yeah, yeah. Um, so would you say, are you in the studio like seven days a week? Yeah, like six days a week for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There is no do when I when I have nothing to, to do, I go to my studio. <laughs> um, another question I like to ask um, everyone that's that's been on the show is, um, what is one piece of art that you have to see in the world before you die? Mm. Well. I had a few Francis Bacon I was really trying to see, but I saw them in London mm -hmm. a few years ago. So no, what I would really want to see would be a big uh, Katharina Grosse uh, uh, yeah. installation. You <laughs> see, I never saw one. I saw paintings and canvas from Katharina Grosse, but I never uh, walk in in one of her installation mm -hmm. and 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 sometimes it's really 300 meters installation and where everything is painted and yeah maybe you no know, i i would love to be able to see one of these things yeah one of her installations is actually i'm i'm in baltimore right now and yeah. one of her installations is up at the baltimore museum yeah. of art and oh. it's it's spectacular yeah uh, i think i think oh just to walk through it and then you feel that that pulse of the paint in general yeah. and it's it's very moving it's it's well, gorgeous i never been inside it so <laughs> i want to to try this um and then what would be one piece of advice that you've either received over the years or one piece of advice you would like to pass on to an up and coming generation of artists um well, what I said a bit earlier, uh, when I really started to, to talk uh, with other people from the art world was a big moment for me, I think. Because uh, before this moment, like three years ago, 
I, I was really doing all the process by myself without asking or having a discussion with anyone. Mm -hmm. Like I was enjoying paintings, but the process and how and why and was really um, personal. I, I, I was just doing it for myself and no, uh, with the big discussion I have with other people from the art world, um, I think it was really a good advice to, to be able to, to talk with other people really older than me because the people I was talking with, uh, they are like uh, 60, 60 years old. So they shared with me what they think uh, is a good process. And, and it was a good advice like to be able to, to erase every effect you can have, a, a useless effect you have on the painting. That's why I, I stopped to, to make a lot of effect on my paintings. So it was a good advice for me and also make the subject really matter more than the, than the image, you know? Mm. Even yeah. if it's a bit uh, subjective to, to say this, but for me, it was some good advice. But to make it professional, I don't know what the best advice, except that, you know, it's it started for me with one gallerist that sold a painting. And, and I was like, it's possible, like, because you know, when you are not living from paintings, you are like, it's only for, it's only for other people, but mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's possible. Like you can live from what you like to do. So when you start to catch this, you really don't want to let it go. So it's possible. So let's do it. Okay. And Lou, I think that's kind of the perfect place to wrap this up. So if our viewers are looking for your work, where might they be able to find it? Uh, on internet, of course, Instagram and Facebook and my website. But um, my gallery is in Paris. It's called Guido Romero Pierini. So it's my gallery in Paris. Um, at New York, you can check at uh, Alouche Gallery. Um, at Miami, you can check uh, my work at Robert Fontaine Gallery. Um, and also uh, in Nantes, in France, at House Gallery. And in Germany, um, at uh, Munich, München. You can check at Flash Gallery. So it's mostly the big place where there is my work actually. Great, great, great. Um, Lou, I've really enjoyed this. I'm a huge fan of your work. Thank you so <laughs> much for being on the show. Um, Thank you, you're welcome. Everyone, make sure to check out Lou's work if you haven't yet and tune in next week for our next episode. All right, I will Thank see you. you later. Bye.